Welcome back to Falcon Update. I'm Nolan Hoganboom, joined tonight by Olivia Bardot from the Center for Public Humanities. Thanks so much for joining us tonight. Thanks for having me. So we'll start big picture. What is the Center for Public Humanities? I've heard a lot about it, but... Yeah, um, so the Center for Public Humanities is basically this group on campus that tries to bridge the gap between the classroom and just our communities. So we really try to do humanities-based projects and just show the ways that the humanities are relevant in daily life. And what's your role at the center? Yeah, so at the center, I've actually been there since my sophomore year, so this is my third year. Uh, this year I'm serving as the senior fellow, which is half um, coordinating and half just, re excuse me, research. Okay, so uh, what are some projects that you guys have been working on lately? Yeah, at the moment, um, my biggest project has personally been coordinating our voters registration booths on campus. Um, we're I also, saw those. yes, <laughs> we're doing also a lot with um, uh, projects with Harrisburg. So our big project last year was um, 100 Voices. So with that, we were just kind of looking at um, the people who used to live in Harrisburg, where the Capitol Park is, and it, it was called the Eighth Ward. And it was completely leveled back in the day just to make room for the Capitol. Yeah. So we were just kind of looking at the people who lived there. We did a lot of archival research and just discovered how vibrant the community was. Um, we've done a lot with that through a play that was actually in Harrisburg. We've done um, newspapers, uh, a lot of really big things. We actually published a book through it. Fantastic. Um, yeah, a lot of archival research. That's really cool stuff. Yes. Uh, but get back to the voter registration sure. stuff that you touched on there. I think that's something that's on everybody's minds at the moment. Uh, what did that what did that process entail for Messiah University? Yeah, so one of the big things that we wanted to look at was just how important it is for us to raise awareness about voting on campus because we are the age group that votes the least, but we are also the age group that can completely shift an election if right. a movement grows. So uh, we really wanted to do this project. We called it Get Out the Vote. Um, so it just looked a lot like um, just being there with the resources to answer people's questions, to physically help them register to vote, um, just a lot of things like that. Um, we were there, like emails, any questions in person, just to make sure everyone was prepared. Now is Get Out the Vote, is that part of a national program or is? I believe it's just something that Messiah kind of coined the term for. Don't quote me on that though. Um, but I know um, HRA did a little bit as well previously this year. Um, we've done some stuff in the past as well for voters registration. Okay. So how about, how about the, uh, the registration process itself? What does that look like for any students who maybe didn't get a chance to get to the table? Yeah, sure. So I'd say the first step is to specifically look at your state because it varies from state to state. The deadline is coming up though in about a week, give or take, for each state, so just make sure you look at that. Um, you double check your registration status if you're not registered to vote. It's real simple, less than 10 minutes. You just fill out all your information. And then from there, there's a lot of choices you have. Um, because of the restrictions with COVID, we can't really, most of the time, get off campus. So right. uh, mail-in ballot is a really great option. Um, so there are steps to apply for a mail-in ballot for your specific location where you are originally from. You could also do um, in-person voting if you can go back home. If not, you can do um, a change on your location for registration. So you can actually physically vote for the location of your college because you have that as an option. Or you can do a mail-in ballot for this area as your college. Uh, so even if you're not doing a mail-in ballot, uh, does, is Messiah gonna offer in-person voting again this year? Yes, so we're actually working on doing um, more shuttles to take students to campus. Because of the difficulties with COVID restrictions, we're working on trying to get vans and just being able to get people there safely. Um, that will be coming soon. We're still in the process of making that happen, but um, I think the nearest location, there's a couple churches, so we just drive students there to make sure okay. they can vote. Yeah. Uh, so I am an out-of-state voter. I'm not from, I'm from Georgia. That's <laughs> so I applied for my mail-in ballot, but it hasn't gotten here yet. Right. So uh, when's, when, should I, when should I have it back by? Yeah, sure. So I actually got my mail-in ballot today because that's what I'm doing. Nice. So um, they say to make sure you have your ballot in within two weeks, just so you can kind of account for the process because you don't want to wait too long or else it kind of slows down the process of when um, we just find out the results of the election. So as long as your ballot is postmarked by 8 o'clock on November 3rd, it counts. Okay. 
Okay. But you'd want to make sure it gets in at least two weeks early, just so you know the results come in earlier. Sure. So, uh, so is there anything else that hmm. ed, uh, Maasai students in particular might need to know? Yeah. I would say really look at the directions on your ballot if you're doing a mail-in ballot. There are so many um, specifics for how to fill it in, so making sure that every single part's filled out so you don't have what's called a naked ballot. You really just want to make sure everything's in so your vote counts. You want to be thorough. Very want to make thorough. sure that everything is, every T's crossed, yes. every I's dotted. Yes. So that the vote counts. Yes. Which is important. Always. <laughs> Well, that's all we have for this week's show here. Uh, thank you once again for coming out. Thank you. Uh, for JC Seltzer, Paul Callender, and our other excellent reporters, I'm Nolan Hoganboom. Have a fantastic night, and we'll see you next week.